Replacing rickety animal-drawn carts, the horseless carriage, aka the car, was the hot thing to have back in the early 1900s. Cars were the personal mobility revolution of the 20th century. And a hundred years down the road, I reckon it's about time for another. And the word on the street is that that's going to come in the form of autonomous vehicles, self-driving cars to you and me. But what I want to know, and probably what you're wondering, is when am I going to get one? Using a baffling array of sensors from radar to lidar to good old-fashioned video cameras, self-driving vehicles build a detailed model of the ever-changing world around them. Then, using complex algorithms and machine learning based on more than half a million lines of code, they work out what they should do with that information in order to get you safely from A to B. It sounds like science fiction, until a few years ago, it was. But we are living in an age of unprecedented technological advancement, and self-driving cars really are the next big thing. No longer just a pipe dream. These things are being tested on real roads right now. And they promise more than just a relaxing commute. Approximately 1.2 million people die on the roads every year. And a survey in the US suggested that more than 90% of fatalities were a result of human error. Take us humans out of the equation and those figures will drop considerably. Not only that, but the computer-like efficiency of driverless cars allows for more cars on the road and less needless braking and manoeuvring, leading to fewer traffic jams, shorter travel times, and more miles per gallon. Sounds great, and if you're anything like me, you'll be wondering who will be the first lucky one to replace their steering wheel with a smartphone. Well, it will depend on where you live. With the basic technology in place, private companies in countries all over the world are putting the R&D pedal to the metal in an effort to get their autonomous vehicles ready for the road ahead of the rest. And in the true spirit of corporate competition, each company is taking their own unique approach. In the US, driverless cars have become a common sight in Silicon Valley, as well as Phoenix, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, Detroit, Austin, and some other places. Developers are keeping their cars confined to the specific neighborhoods with high resolution and frequently updated local maps. Using precise GPS to figure out where they are in relation to those maps, machine learning is allowing the cars to navigate even the most challenging of urban environments. The problem is, with different manufacturers testing in different cities, the kinds of urban environments that they encounter are pretty different too. For example, you've got the twisting tourist and tram-filled streets of San Francisco posing a very different challenge to the wide highways and fractal grid systems of Phoenix. That might not be a problem though. One vision of autonomous car domination does away with the idea of vehicle ownership altogether. You'd simply hail a ride through a handy app and up rolls a driverless car ready to take you to wherever you want to go. Different cars knowing different cities is therefore less of a problem unless you want to start traveling cross country. For that, maybe your best bet is a well-known car manufacturer in Germany they've adopted a different approach. Instead of relying on maps and local knowledge, they have focused on improving their sensors to detect the ever-changing world around the car in fine detail, helping to build a real-time simulation that the car's brain can plan a course through. Doing it this way is allowing German cars to speed along stretches of the autobahn at more than 100 kilometers an hour, seamlessly overtaking and merging with human-piloted traffic. The other difference between the German cars and many that are being developed in the US is that they look like normal cars. The high-res sensors are hidden within the body of the car rather than being perched on the top like a strangely missized hat. For those that want to look inconspicuous whilst whizzing along at the mercy of the machine, then maybe Germany is the place to be. Here in the UK, we've currently got autonomous cars picking their way through our cities and urban centres with plans to start testing them on the motorways by next year. We're keen not to be left behind and the government has poured £20 million into making sure that not just the technology, but also the infrastructure and legislation is up to scratch. Sadly, in reality though, despite all of this effort and investment, you are unlikely to be stepping into your own self-driving car and switching off your brain anytime soon. There are still a whole load of challenges that face the autonomous car when it's out 
in the wild. Most of the accidents involving the testing vehicles have been caused by one, human drivers' inattention and unpredictable behaviour, two, intersections and interactions that rely on eye-to-eye -eye contact between human drivers, and three, in places where the signage and road layout are worn or damaged or absent, the car can be left stranded and confused. At the moment, such situations will prompt the car to sound an alarm and cry for its human occupant to take over, so you would still need to be watching the road as if you were really driving. Autonomous car developers in the US were in for a shock when they filmed their testers inside their prototype vehicles. Despite being told that the cars were still a work in progress, the humans inside instinctively put their trust in the hunk of metal and its electronic brain. They took their hands off the wheel, their eyes off the road, and their brains off the task at hand. For electronic brains that are still learning to navigate, like a toddler learning to walk, that can be a dangerous thing. And it leaves us with a paradox that could put the brakes on our driverless car dreams. To be safe enough to carry precious human cargo, since we clearly can't be trusted, the car needs to be prepared for anything that it might encounter. But to get to that point, it needs to test, 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 and keep, keep learning. We never stop learning and your car will never stop either. It's just a question of when it will be safe to put your life in the non-existent hands of your car's experience and that is a scary thought. Regardless, the journey to an autonomous future has begun in earnest and soon driverless car may sound as old-fashioned as horseless carriage. On the figurative self-driving roadmap, experts predict that fully autonomous cars will be commonplace by 2025, meaning that the current generation will be the last to experience manual driving and all the dangers, the boredom and the leg cramp that goes along with it. Would you want to own a self-driving car? Maybe just take a drive in one or does it worry you? Let me know in the comments below. Give us a like, subscribe to BBC Earth Lab for more great science videos and I'll see you next time.